What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Dalwini 15 year old. Stick around. So we've got a Dalwini with us today. This is their 15 year old expression and uh, Dalwini doesn't have a big core range. Uh, every year they come out with their distillers editions, those are limited releases, and they also have some limited edition older bottlings as well, but in terms of like affordable bottlings from their core range, you basically just have the 15 year old here and another expression called Winter's Gold. Uh, Winter's Gold is a no age stated expression, and that one, anyway, Dalwini calls itself a Highland Whiskey despite being the Speyside region. Uh, the brand is owned by Diageo, it's part of Diageo's classic malts range. It's known for having a very light, gentle character, and personally speaking, I've always picked up some really nice, soft, woody notes in this that I do enjoy. Now, Dalwini uses very gently peated malt in its production, but it's almost indiscernible. You really have to look for it. Uh, the owner, Diageo, is kind of famous for not being very transparent about their production processes, and that does apply to our bottle here. Um, formally, we don't know what kind of barrels this was matured in, although informally, this is a bourbon matured whiskey. Dalwini is also one of only a small number of distilleries to use worm tubs in their production. Uh, worm tubs are famous for giving their whiskey a little bit more weight and a little bit more substance. Usually. They're also the highest distillery in Scotland. They're over 350 meters above sea level and, you know, presumably it is a little bit colder up there so that might slow down the maturation process, which could explain why their entry level aged expression is 15 years old instead of, let's say, 10 or 12. Now I first tried this whiskey pretty early on in my whiskey journey. Uh, it was widely available, it was affordable, and it came with a decent age statement. So I did have a few bottles of it back in the day, but it's been a while. I think it's probably the better part of a decade since I last had a bottle of this whiskey, so why don't we catch up with it? Why don't we jump into our review here, see what this whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So our specs are pretty weak here, which is something we've come to expect from Diageo. Our ABV on this one is 43%. It is, of course, chill filtered, and it is colored, so, yep. So you can check out our unnatural color here. Um, I do like the shape of Dalwini bottles. I like the squat look. Uh, for the label on this one, I think it's fine. It's not bad. I much prefer the color scheme on the DE, on the Distiller's Edition. That one plays around with like blues and golds. This one with its light yellow color scheme, I think it's, yeah, it's okay. Uh, presentation score here is going to be 3 out of 5. Obviously, zero information. It doesn't say anything about the casts that they use. And of course, they're not going to talk about how they're chill filtered and colored. Um, all that we do know is that it's 15 years old and that it's 43%, which of course is mandatory information. Um, yeah, the bottles, it's okay. Let's check our nose. So we have a classic light Highland profile here. We're starting on florals. We've got honey. We've got these cereals and these grains that Dalwini is known for. Fruity, we've got peaches, we've got pears, we've got lemon, uh, there's some ginger in here, and some vanilla. This is very bright and clean. Now the palette. Bit watery, bit oily. Um, toffee, lemongrass, white chocolate, some honey in here, some barley, we have crystal sugar, we have some almonds, and some grain. And now the finish. Okay. We're getting just a little hint of peat in here. It's subtle, but it's there. Um, I'm getting white pepper, I'm getting jasmine, I'm getting more lemongrass, uh, some orange blossom, and some almonds, and we're lingering on kind of like an orange soda tingle here. So it's pretty clear why these guys call themselves a Highland Whiskey as opposed to a Space Cider. This is a light, gentle, floral whiskey if ever there was one. Um, and it's a good introduction to the sort of lighter profiles that we can expect from the Highland region. Um, no rough edges to be found here. This is as soft and easy as they come. So yeah, we have a quintessential entry-level bright Highland profile here. 
this would be a good one to sort of introduce people to scotch a lot of people online have said the same thing that this would be a great sort of segue into the world of single malts because it's just so friendly it's so approachable it's so light and it's got some of those classic scotchy flavors in it as for maturation, I suspect mostly second fill bourbon barrels were used to mature this whiskey. Uh, the wood notes in this are very soft, but they're still pleasant. They're very light and bright, almost as light and bright as the top notes in here. Uh, we also have cereals, honeys, and grains, some of those classic Dalwini notes that the brand is known for. And I do like that tiny little hint of peat on the finish. Makes for a nice touch. So this is a competently made whiskey and the overall character here does have a nice balance to it. What it doesn't have is a hook. There's nothing in here that really grabs my attention. What it does do, it does well, but I find myself wishing for more stuff to explore in this. We do have some nice notes, but the overall experience here does come off somewhat generic. Now I know a lot of people out there are fans of this one, but honestly this is not my preferred style of whiskey. And even within its category and price range, I do think there are better buys out there. If you want a light, bright, floral Highland character, go for the Glen Cadam 10. If you just want light and easy, try out the Glen Morangy 10. It's a cheaper whiskey, and yeah, it's more simple than this, but I prefer the profile. Uh, if you want something that's barley forward, head up to Highland Park, check out their 10-year-old, maybe their 12-year-old. Beautiful barley notes in that. Um, if you want a gently peated Highland whiskey, and I mean very gently peated, head over to Kleinlich 14. That is a whiskey with more substance than this. So yeah, all of these are similarly priced options, but I think they're offering us a more interesting experience than what we've got here. So while this whiskey doesn't really do anything wrong, I find it to be basic. There's a lot of entry-level Highland whiskeys out there that just do more than this. Um, competently made stuff, easy to sip, but there's just too many better options out there. So my score here is going to be 82. This whiskey doesn't do very much for me. Honestly, I find it uninspired and generic. I wish it had more of an edge to it. I wish maybe they took more risks with their profile. I don't know what they could do. Maybe play around with their peat levels. Maybe they could use more first fill bourbon barrels in the maturation. I don't know what this whiskey needs, but it needs something. Now, of course, I'm not going to hide the fact that I can be snobby sometimes. I get pretty judgy when I come across basic malts like this. And that doesn't mean I hate coming back to them. I can absolutely sip and enjoy stuff like this very casually, but I'm not going to rate it highly. It's not interesting enough. As it stands, this is not a bottle that I'll feel the need to come back to anytime soon. Um, as I said earlier, I know there are plenty of people out there who are fans of this stuff. Um, but personally, I tend to perceive this as a whiskey for either beginners or people who are just looking for a very casual sipper on a hot summer's day. And tell you what, that could be you. It is very hot outside. So price wise, this is gonna be a few dollars pounds over the winter's gold. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the winter's gold, not great. I suppose the 15 is worth the price hike, but personally, I would go one step higher and invest in the DE. The DE is a sherried whiskey beautiful stuff uh, it's pretty widely available even though it is a limited annual release and it is by far my favorite Dalwini from their affordable range and yes I do know that this is one of the cheaper 15 year olds on the market today but honestly I can think of plenty of younger whiskeys that cost about the same amount of money that are better 10 year olds 12 year olds what have you so this is not a whiskey that I'm going to recommend to you guys I don't think it's great bang for buck All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Dalwini 15 here? What were your thoughts on it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.